When Final Fantasy IX released at the turn of the millennium, it served as the perfect bookend for Final Fantasy on the original PlayStation. Designed as a tribute to everything that had come before, Final Fantasy IX was appealing for multiple reasons. Not only was every character deep-rooted in fantasy, but the world itself was rich and diverse, the soundtrack was expansive and gorgeous to listen to, and the story was just quintessential, featuring numerous twists and turns. Amongst critics, this was all clear. Famitsu awarded Final Fantasy IX a 38 out of 40, the same score as Final Fantasy VII and one point higher than Final Fantasy VIII. In the West, it would also be the highest reviewed Final Fantasy game to be released on the PlayStation, something that also made it the highest reviewed Final Fantasy game in history. Final Fantasy IX would also win numerous awards, such as Best Animation, Best Art Direction and Best Console RPG at the 4th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards. But even with all these accolades, Final Fantasy IX's fiscal performance would end up being undermined by its release window, and this happened in every major region. The original plan had been to launch the Japanese version in Q1 of the year 2000, but with Dragon Quest VII due to release at the same time, Square chose to postpone the launch as they felt competing head-to-head -head would damage its revenue potential. This decision was not taken lightly. At the time, Square was starting to face the reality of the mounting costs associated with the Spirits Within, their first attempt at creating a Hollywood movie. But even though they knew postponing Final Fantasy IX would mean adjusting their fiscal forecasts, they felt it was a necessary step, and it would see Square's net profit ending up being 57% less than the previous year. The other knock-on effect was that Final Fantasy IX would end up releasing after the PlayStation 2, and even though it was playable on Sony's brand new console via backwards compatibility, the reality was that consumers in every major market had already had their heads turned. They were more interested in looking forwards than backwards. When comparing to Final Fantasy VIII, this meant Final Fantasy IX would end up selling 25% less copies in Japan and over 40% less copies when looking at North America and Europe combined. In real terms, this meant Final Fantasy IX had sold almost 3 million copies less than its predecessor. But, in spite of its decreased fiscal performance, something that has even continued through to the modern day as shown by its sales on Steam, Final Fantasy IX is still a beloved game amongst the fanbase, and that sentiment has only been enhanced with every subsequent re-release and remaster. Which brings us on to the curious case of the Final Fantasy IX Remake. But before we delve into that wonderful topic, a quick message from us. We have just launched a new crowdfunding initiative called Project Historia, serving as a long-form docu-series chronicling the complete history of Square Backers of Project Historia will get early access to each part and a unique array of physical goods. But beyond that, backers would also be able to help shape the docuseries, choosing when and where we focus, and they will get access to what we're calling living documentaries. A unique proposition, this will see us continue to add to already released parts, should we unearth new information, but these supercuts will only be available to those who support the campaign. If this sounds of interest, please head over to patreon.com forward slash ffunion and donate what you can. Alright, back to the Final Fantasy IX Remake. In the past few years, fervour around this particular project has increased for numerous reasons, but the notion of producing a Final Fantasy IX Remake is by no means a new initiative. Almost a year after the Final Fantasy VII tech demo had wowed audiences during Sony's PlayStation 3 press conference at E3 2005, Square Enix announced that they were planning to remake Final Fantasy VII, VIII, and IX. But instead of being for the PlayStation 3, featuring awesome graphics akin to what audiences had just seen during the technical demo, the remakes were planned for the PlayStation 2. At the time, it was announced that the remakes would feature numerous graphical and audio enhancements alongside special features. But perhaps, after realising that this would not quite align with the expectations of the fanbase, those plans were swept under the carpet and never heard about again. Things would then go quiet for many years in relation to a Final Fantasy IX remake as Final Fantasy VII became the focal point. But with the Final Fantasy VII remake now a reality, and for the most part being well received, the fanbase started to look for other remake candidates. Square Enix employees have helped to stoke the fires in this regard, with there being numerous mentions of a Final Fantasy VI remake and a Final Fantasy VIII remake. 
but all of this has just been more wishful thinking, as the comments have been non-committal, referring to projects they could make or want to make, but are unable to do so because they're already busy with other projects. And in this regard, it's very similar to the situation surrounding Final Fantasy X III, which we covered in a previous Curious Case video, with the development team stating that it cannot exist until the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy is complete. Now, Kitaze, to our knowledge at least, has never made direct comments about the prospect of a Final Fantasy IX remake, and no, we're not counting ambiguous teases, well, not yet at least. This could be because it's one of the few games from the golden era that he had no part in developing, but it could also be that it's low down on the pecking order in terms of games they want to see remade as creators, something that makes sense as Final Fantasy VIII sold more and Final Fantasy VI is often held in higher regard amongst critics and fans. But even with that being the case, rumours of a Final Fantasy IX remake being in development gained significant traction throughout 2021 for numerous reasons. Early in the year, a group of video game industry veterans decided to create an initiative called the Memoria Project. Fueled by their passion for the source material, the objective of the Memoria Project has been to create a non-playable version of Final Fantasy IX that showcases how it might look and feel if it was remade with modern day technology. Once assets began to be released, the response was pretty astounding, something shown by how our video on the Memoria Project exploded and that fans responded in such a positive manner and in such volumes showed how much demand there was for an actual Final Fantasy IX remake to exist. But beyond that, it also showed that the visual style of Final Fantasy IX, if modernised in the correct way, would not feel out of place within the modern gaming landscape. Project Memoria would then be complemented by the Mogri mod. Even though this mod was first released in 2018, it wouldn't be until 2020 and 2021 that it would start to gain real traction. It would see release trailers for version 8.2 and 8.3 receive hundreds of thousands of views with plenty of media attention due to how impressive the mod performed in comparison to Square Enix's own remastering efforts. In June, it was also revealed that Square Enix were collaborating with Cybergroup Studios, a French company known for producing and distributing animated programs. They will be working on a brand new animated adaptation of Final Fantasy IX aimed towards 8-13 to year olds and wider family groups. This was the first official confirmation that Square Enix were keen to place more focus on Final Fantasy IX, but outside of the announcement, nothing would end up being shown, and some 18 months on, we're still none the wiser as to what this will actually end up looking like. Perhaps the main reason for the silence around the animated show relates to the third event that happened in 2021 related to Final Fantasy IX, a pretty monumental data leak that seemed to confirm its existence. On the 13th of September 2021, this saw a huge list of games extracted from an NVIDIA GeForce Now database and they were shared online. Amongst this list were tons of high profile games, many of which had yet to be announced, and one of them was a Final Fantasy IX remake. Within the initial days of the leak, there were numerous questions about how legitimate it may be, but as time passed, more and more of the unannounced games such as the Resident Evil 4 remake and Tekken 8 became a reality. Square Enix featured in a pretty significant capacity with 9 games leaked. 7 would then end up being announced, including Kingdom Hearts 4. As of the publishing of this video, it means there are now only 2 projects yet to be revealed. The Final Fantasy Tactics Remaster and the Final Fantasy IX Remake. Based on how many projects have become a reality, it feels as though it's only a matter of time until the last 2 are also revealed. The only thing that would prevent this is if both projects have been cancelled for some reason, but that seems unlikely. Tactics Remastered has perhaps been held back to let Square Enix's other tactical releases breathe. After all, this year has seen three prominent releases in Triangle Strategy, Diofield Chronicles and Tactics Ogre Reborn. And even though Diofield Chronicles ended up being a flop, the other two games have sold incredibly well. And based on that, you have to assume that a remastered version of Tactics would also sell very well. The Final Fantasy IX Remake is perhaps in a similar situation. At the moment, Square Enix has two major games in focus, Final Fantasy XVI and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. If they added a third game on top of everything else they're working on, including Dragon Quest XII, conflicts may start to arise. But thanks to a tease from Yoshinori Kitaze, fans have been given hope that we may see the Final Fantasy IX Remake announced at some point this year. 
As part of a New Year's greeting, Katase offered a brief update on development progress on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but he also said, there's also another big announcement unrelated to Final Fantasy VII that I can't say anything about just yet. Rest assured, we're working hard to make sure 2023 is the most exciting year yet. Playing right into the hands of the Puppet Master, the statement sent fans into mass speculation mode, and based on everything that has happened over the past few years, the winning candidate for this mystery announcement has ended up being the Final Fantasy IX Remake. Time will tell whether this becomes a reality, but at this point, it's starting to feel quite similar to what happened in the build-up to the Final Fantasy VII Remake being announced, with expectations only continuing to increase and being very focused on this particular entry, as opposed to any other potential candidates. Either way, we're curious to know how likely you think it is that the Final Fantasy IX Remake is in development, and whether you feel it will be revealed this year. Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and hit that subscribe button. Alright everyone, this is Daryl signing out. I'd like to give a big thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Benjamin Snow, The Livestream, Elsa Claire Farron, Galcian D. Kujata, Gregory and Lord of Morning, who are super special Onionite supporters, and of course, thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.